Diary of a Sinner, transcribed from the left thigh. 281 finger marks. My nails grow back. My left arm remains mutilated, devoured in desperation. My skin is more leather than flesh, and my thin, dark hair now reaches my shoulders. My teeth are loose. My eyes burn from watching the sun crawl overhead. I ache. Sometimes I sleep, and rarely I dream. Once I dreamt of a corridor carved into the side of a hulking mountain. The ceiling was nearly beyond my sight, and the walls were more than a mile apart. Harsh red stone foundations littered the floor of the cavern. The only light was a sickly yellow glow emanating from far beyond the entrance. I heard a voice calling before I awoke, weeping. I think of this dream often. I pass the days imagining. I imagine a cool breeze blowing over my sun-baked flesh. I imagine the waves cresting and beating gently against the base of my pillar, sending foam and spray dancing into the air. I imagine great, gray rain clouds drifting across the sky. I imagine rain. I miss the rain. I would rend all the flesh from my bones for a mouthful of rainwater. At night I imagine a billion stars blinking in and out of view. The organic tapestry of a cool earthen night. A glittering canvas of majesty and natural beauty. Dark green pine trees and the smell of summer. I try to keep my eyes shut most days and nights. I lose myself in these reveries only to snap back to the painted, silent, motionless world I'm trapped in. Sometimes I sing to myself, songs whose lyrics have long gone from my mind. Sometimes I tell myself stories from my childhood. Sometimes I scream until my lungs burn and blood leaps from my throat and over my teeth. Sometimes I think to jump, to give it all up and hope for a final death. But I cannot seem to draw myself beyond the bounds of the platform's edge. Perhaps it is the hope that the visitor will return to rescue me. Perhaps I am stubborn. Perhaps I deserve this. I will wait. Death will not visit me here. I will not beg for company. End of entry. Your cheeks are gone. You must be truly starving to do that to yourself. The visitor's voice is deep and warm. He gazes at me with his silver gold visage, somehow expressing curiosity despite a lack of features. It's been more than 300 days since our last meeting, but he came back. The visitor came back. I have baked beneath the blood-red sun in solitude for nearly a year on this fucking pillar. I have fallen victim to eternal starvation and never-ending thirst, but not to death, never to death. I whisper through the ragged flesh of my face. Thank you for the... R You've... I weep quietly. My throat seems to have forgotten how to produce anything other than screams and sobs. You have endured much, and you deserve answers. I will be honest with you, but you will not enjoy hearing what I have to say. I cannot tell you everything, but I can tell you what is necessary. I gingerly wipe the tears from my eyes. Just to hear another voice is a blessing. Nothing is blessed in this place. We are both prisoners here, 
The difference between us is that I may possess the tools we need to escape. Escape? I don't understand. What am I doing here? Do you believe in God? I struggle with a response. I'm half mad with thirst, perhaps mad altogether. And the casual philosophy of the question brings me nearly to rage. What kind of fucking question is that? The visitor chuckles in his... Silver cloak trembles slightly, matching the gentle shaking of his chest. What do you think God does with the ones he loves? This is important, I promise you. I unclench my jaw. He sends them to heaven. Are you trying to tell me we're in hell? The visitor turns from me and gazes off into the deep blue void. The void I had become so familiar with over the passing weeks and months. That is only half correct. The god you have been told of throughout your meandering existence is a fable. A myth devised to quell the fears of children and guide privileged men to power. Your concept of god lacks clarity and imagination. God does not bid his dead beloved to heaven to live once more in glory by his side. There are no snow-white angels, there are no golden clouds of satin, no land of milk and honey. There is, indeed, a gate, but that is another story. When God's beloved pass from this earth, he bestows upon them the ultimate gift. No more pain and sorrow. No more suffering. No more confusion. He allows them to die completely. I stutter. Then why am I here? The visitor turns around. The bright pearls of his eyes seem to warm the bones peering through my paper-thin flesh. He is unnatural. Because he hates you, and he has consigned you to suffer the same fate as a miserable immortal god, you must live forever and endure eternity, alone and insane, the same way he will. I stare at the visitor for a moment before my countenance falls. Then we are in hell. There is no end to this nightmare. There is no escape. A thought, and my head swings back up. What if I were to jump, dive into the ocean, and drown myself? The visitor shakes his cowled head. There is a powerful magic at work keeping you here on this platform. Even if you were able to wrench yourself free from your invisible tethers and leap off, you would suffer the excruciating impact of hitting the water, only to be immediately returned to this platform where you would suffer immeasurably, bearing your wounds for all eternity. I gaze down into the water, then there is no escape. No way out of this. The visitor moves abruptly and closes the distance between us. The air is electric. Oh, there is an exit. You cannot see it, but it is an issue of perspective. Wh what? The visitor reaches out in an instant and grabs my right hand. My good hand. My only hand. And pulls me toward him and over the edge of the platform. But instead of falling, I find myself sideways, standing on the pillar's flutes. The sky to my back, and my eardrums are nearly ruptured from the sound. The sound of a horrible groaning and tearing and creaking like a thousand oak trees being ripped from their moorings to be snapped in half simultaneously. 
and the great gaping ocean rises up to meet my gaze in all its terrible glory, looming in the distance. The visitor screams above the din, his voice nearly lost amid the madness. MOVE! Beneath my feet the pillar, my pillar. My open-air prison cell begins to fall apart and I am jerked down and forward as the visitor pulls me away from the crumbling edge. With each step the cacophony grows louder and the marble falls away and down and around us, pelting our shoulders with debris and ash. Three hundred yards of marble leading directly into the infinite wall of water breaks apart as we tear ourselves down the length of this impossible walkway. The visitor yells something in... Not speech. Not really language. Something closer to... Music. Song. And the water splits and peels back away from itself like a curtain, parting at the base of the pillar. Roaring and swelling, opening up into true black, eternal black, unending, we fall. No. We run through. <laughs>